Hello everybody, uh, this is Blue and I would like to talk about role playing. Um, not everybody is going to be good at role playing. Just like so many other games and sports out there, some people are really good at it and some people are really bad at it. And there are people that should not be role playing. If you lack the ability to separate yourself from the game or to use your imagination, role playing is not for you. And I highly suggest that you find another hobby. Even fewer people are meant to be a GM, a game master, a dungeon master because there should be some basic standards needed to become a good GM. You need to be able to be creative. You need to think on your feet, be able to respond to the actions of the players and their PCs. And so if you cannot do this, you really should not be in the game. What sparked this video was I have seen so many darn videos out there where people are talking about this amazing computer program that's going to make world building and all that so much easier. It's not meant to be easy. It is a challenge and it can be hard, yes, but it can be very fun as well. If you are dependent on a computer program, you are not being you. You are letting a computer program create this, that, and that takes away from the game. How would you like it if you did like a hex crawl, which I'll be talking about in just a little bit. And the map that the computer made, everybody enjoyed, but you didn't make it. So you don't get to take credit for it. The computer made it. To be a good GM, you have to be creative, responsive. You have to have a quick wit about you. Okay, that's why I have this little image of Tyrone Lannister from Game of Thrones. Because that's what he was. He was, you know, flexible, fought on his feet, cunning. He had a wit about him. He knew when to fight and when to use diplomacy. It made that character very dynamic. It can handle many situations. And that's what you need to do to be a good GM. The first time I GM'd, um, I sucked. I thought I could handle it, no big deal and all that, so I created a few scenarios for this group of three players, and they each had two PCs. And so, I, create, I started them off in a wooded area. Um, they're in a wooded area with a road that goes north-south. You go look to the north end and you can see some lights, a town. A few miles away. If you look south, same thing. You see a small town a few miles away. What you gonna do? And so I had a few scenarios, you know, you know, if they go north there we're gonna do this, if they go south we're gonna do that. Well, two of those players decided that we're gonna go west into the woods and we're gonna get supplies. Wasn't prepared for that. And I tried to work around it, but they were determined to derail whatever plans I've made to challenge me as a GM so that I could learn. That day sucked for me. And so I learned more and more about it because the last thing I wanted to do was take away the player's agency and so 
it was just a mess. I, I wasn't going to railroad anybody. And so since we a GM has to be able to handle everything nice and neat, they need to be able to think on their feet. And a computer cannot do that. And so I think there are too many people that are dependent on computer programs. Um, I hear about World Anvil and all that where people can create maps and all this and that and to be a good GM you got to be you, you got to be creative, you got to have a good connection with your world so that you can be part telling the story. And Telling a story is important. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Nothing can stop it. No enemy can defeat it. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? All right. A GM is not the storyteller. He builds a foundation that creates potential for many stories. And it's just which one are the players and the PCs going to create. If you cannot build a good story, you are not being a good GM. And so if you are dependent on the computers to do everything for you, I think that you're doing a terrible job. Okay, we have to think about it like magic because telling a story, creating a story is magical, right? A wizard cannot just pick up a wand, any wand, and then cast a spell unless he's Harry Potter apparently. What skill do we require them to have? Attunement. They must build a connection to the want. They must, you know, have some form of knowledge and balanced connection with the wand to cast spells. Well, you need to have a connection, a bond with the game, with your world. And it's kind of hard, in my opinion, to attune to it if you are having the computer generate it for you. Um, and now the next one is very important as well. I must do my part for the honor of my house. Wouldn't you agree? But how? Well, my brother has a sword. And I have my mind, and a mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone. That's why I read so much Jon Snow. Now, why am I saying this is because if you are dependent on the computer programs, you are not really applying yourself. You're letting the computer do the generating, the thinking, and all that. And how good is it going to be when that can, if you're in the middle of a session, and you know you are needing to do a change up. Do you go into the computer program, spend a few minutes programming and putting in information and seeing what the computer suggests next? Okay, that takes away from it. You know, they talk about immersion. How can you have immersion if you cannot quickly react to the events going on in the session? Now, I read books. I use books. I don't use a computer for the creation. You know, I see all these damn programs where they're telling you how to make maps. Make a better gaming world. Here's map info number one. And, you know, there's hundreds of them that do this. I'm going to show you that. That is the map for my world that I'm building. Okay, that's the original. I actually created that map by hand using two poster board sheets. It's not that hard. I didn't just grab the poster board and throw it on there. I have a sketchbook and I was tweaking with 
shapes and patterns and designs. Throwing away three quarters of them because, you know, I'm just going to, you know, I don't look quite right. Let's try this again. And I came up with that map right there. But how did I get an idea of what looks right and what doesn't? Because I have a world atlas. Yes. Okay. I go through this looking at the topography of the world. Going, well, that, that works. That looks cool. That looks realistic because it is. So I created my own map. Now, I actually have it on a computer file. Okay, right there's my map that I have. That's this one right here. And, whoops. I have a computer file for it. What did I do? I drew it on the poster board first. I put in all the little details, all my islands, mountains, deserts lakes, rivers, and that. And then I got out some Dollar General copier paper because you know that stuff's thin, so it actually can work as tr tracing paper. And so I had that down on my table and I traced it out. And right there's what it looked like on paper. This is a low-tech version, and it, I love it because I traced it out. It takes eight papers per panel of the poster board. I then scanned them using my office printer and shrunk them down and pasted them together. And then I was able to add all of the colors and all that that represents various you know, topography on my map. And that is why I got this. And so this is perfect in scale and all that. I can print that up anytime I want to. You know, just like I put it up on the screen here for you. And by doing this, I have a connection, a good connection with my world. I know where Lebanon is. It's an island. Okay, um, so you know, I know where my spiral islands are. I know the names of my deserts. I have ever lake, river, mountain range named. My two deserts are named. You know, I have a connection with my world, and because of that, I'm better at it. I can sit at my desk and just kind of glance up and, you know, okay, I've worked in this area for a little bit. Where am I going? I need to work at next. And I can keep it changing so I don't get any, you know, mental blockage. And so it is a good thing. Now, books are wonderful, just as what Tyrone was saying. And that is because it can give you so much information. Uh, last night I went through and I made on another map all the major cities of Urthena. And it only took me an hour to come up with all the names. I didn't use a computer name generator. I used books. Mostly this book right here, the Battle Book. I also have the Dictionary of Battles right here. And why is this so important? You know, and you know, I saw a video saying, "Come up with names that people think are cool." Screw that. This is your world. You come up with names that you like, that names that fit your needs. You be you. This book is wonderful because it already has names of battles. This has over a thousand entries of battles that have happened in history. And so you can kind of thumb through it real quickly. And, you know, you might see an interesting name. 
and you can use that on your map. Well, I need a name for a city, and so Busaco, B U S A C O. Okay, that works. Okay, so then you can decide where you want it. The other great thing about this book is you can create a theme. Now, some of you might be doing an alternative Earth, okay? Or you might be wanting some interesting names and all you can think about are like maybe standard English or Spanish names and you're wanting something different. Maybe you're wanting names of areas um, such as maybe like Africa names or Chinese names. Well, so if you want Chinese names, just go in back here and you can look at all the ch battles that happened in China and which will give you some interesting names of actual places. Um, you can put historical names in there. I have an area that has more of a Polish feel to it uh, because I'm using the Vistula. Uh, it's a cavalry unit, um, actually more of a regiment that Napoleon used in Napoleonic Wars, but I just love the name Vistula. They got their name from the Vistula River in Poland. Hey, for your history lesson. So I can go through here and I can look up the Polish battles. And I could take all the Polish names and put it into this one area. And so these names have a feel for that area because all the names in this one country are related. You can do the same thing. Um, maybe you have something that is more French. Look up the Napoleonic Wars and you can then take all the battles that happened in France, put them on your map. So there you have a related theme. The names are not looking weird because they're actual names and some of them are distinctive. Now, another bad thing about these people are telling you to use this, this and that to come up with um, city and nation names and all that you got to keep an open mind and so what if you are creating a nation of a fantasy race okay they, these are not human names that you're wanting you are wanting something for the bug man or doors or whatever and so you have to think well these are a fantasy race and they are going to have a different style compared to humans. And so instead of naming a city um, Paris, you know, that's a very well named, um, they want to have, they should have their own flair and all. So I actually have an island named Drugadu. Yeah, that's it. It sounds stupid, maybe, to some people. It, it looks stupid spelled out. But for the bug men, hey, that's cool. That is about being creative. And so the computers could probably come up with some weird names, yes. But sometimes you have to, you know, you want to have them kind of related and all that and a computer cannot generate you know three or four names that have a similar flair to them and another thing that i thought of was getting rid of or ignoring our english rules you know language rules you know how they say i before e except for after c screw that i can be either way front or back you know because you are creating a fantasy realm where there are so many influences maybe you know I before E doesn't mean squat in this fantasy world and so you can create really interesting names now I believe that you should read and that you should have general knowledge on everything um, you are going to be needing to create leaders. You are going to need to create a lot of NPCs. 
So, for me, I have this book right here. I kind of can't read it because that. The Harper Encyclopedia of Military Biographies. If it was a recorded military leader, there are there's a story about it in here. Some of them could be multiple pages. Some of it could be just a couple paragraphs. But if you want to create a somewhat realistic military leader and you have a theme in the area, like we say Napoleonic, we'll look up Napoleonic leaders here and you can do Ney, who was one of Napoleon's most trusted field marshals. And you can create a better character by just jotting a, a few lines from, you know, like the biographies to make a better NPC. You want to create a story and you want it to be kind of realistic, not some weird, you know, with loose connections. Read a history book. Have a reference. You know, if you're um, trying to do like the Punic Wars, which is one of my favorite history periods, well, have a history book that has a little bit about the Punic Wars. And then you can go, well, this is what happened, but I'm going to do this, but I'm going to make a change here. You might decide that in my run world that I was working on, that Carthage is going to win this battle instead of losing that battle. Well, okay, cool. You know, there you have some references and you know how to prepare and create a better story. Now, I have made some comments, you know, there are some people that had videos about the Arthurian, you know, traditions, you know, the stories of King Arthur and all that. I find it boring and, you know, people are saying, well, you don't know much about it. Oh, yes, I do. I have four bookshelves around me full of books. I love to read and so I know about King Arthur and some of the well most of the knights and all that not perfect but I know quite a bit um, fantasy involves a lot of magic right and we have people that are telling you how to create magic systems you know it's a hard system is a soft system and, you know, they have their rules that they want to create. But they are following this, you know, computer-generated pattern. They are wanting to put this restriction on and that restriction on. And... You know, the one thing that I don't think a lot of these people that are telling you on how to create a better magic system have actually studied magic. Okay? Studied witchcraft. Okay? So, I have this book right here plus one, two, three shelves of it so that I can create a more realistic magic system because I've researched it. We are dealing with a lot of religions in our RPGs. And so I think it's very important that we understand religion. And so paganism. You know, there are a lot of pagan concepts in fantasy role playing. So read about it. And if you begin to understand about them, you can create a better fake religion. You can base it off reality if you want to. Heck, if you want to, you can even just incorporate it into your fantasy, you know, role-playing game. Or, you know, to whatever level makes you happy. We... And if you are going to create your own religions, you're going to have gods and goddesses, deities and demigods and all that. Shouldn't you know a little bit about gods? 
Cyclopedia of the Gods right here. There is over 1,000, oh, I'm sorry, more than 2,500 names in this book. And so I can easily research any one particular religion or a specific um, god or goddess. Uh, so like Inara, minor goddess, uh, Hittite and Hurrian, daughter of the weather god Tehub, I think I'm pronounced that right, in the legendary battle with the dragon, you know, right, it's just little bits and pieces of information. Again, it's like everything else. If you have some knowledge of it in your head, you can create a better game. One, you know, we talk about dreams. You know, if you are a decent uh, game master, you are going to have, tell people that they had this dream about this, a dream about that, which is an omen. Well, mind sure research a little bit about dreams. Okay? This is 10,000 dreams. So you could say, well, you dreamt about a dragon, so it means this. You dreamt about whatever. And you can create a better story because you have better details. And one of my favorite professions in role playing is the druid. Study Druidry. Okay, I have a few books on that. Now, each one's different and all that. And so, if you are wanting to create a better story and add details, depth, you need to be able to have books to reference, to read, to understand and build a better world. You can't do that with a computer program, okay? Like I, I believe I mentioned about my terrible first time as a game master, I tried to create options and all that because I wasn't going to railroad um, the PCs, but since they did so much different things that I wasn't prepared for, it was a bad gaming session. And I stopped and I did not try to GM for almost a year. Yeah, I'd say about a year. And so I need you to be better. We need people that can be creative and not dependent on computer programs. We need people that can respond quickly, be witty, Know when to fight, know when not to. And so if you cannot do this on your own, you're really you're not meant to be a GM. If you need a computer program to do most of the steps for you, you know, forget about it. And for the players, you know, I watched a video, um, Wizards of the Tower, their latest one, in which they're talking about how people are needing to visualize. They need it. They need the game to visualize things for them. If you cannot uh, use your imagination to put put it in your head, this game isn't for you. I mean, it's a tabletop role playing game. It's pen and paper. You know, or marker and hex board and all that. But if you need to have the th printed, you know, manufactured terrains for your map, um, I think you're lacking and you shouldn't be playing the game. So that's my rant. Uh, don't be dependent on computers. I think if you need them too much, you're in the wrong hobby. Be creative and you be you. Have everything that you have on that table for your gaming sessions be by your creation, not by some computer 
program that decided that the next hex is going to be a swamp. Okay, do it, you know, be creative. I mean, yeah, have dice rolls and all that for stuff. Not the computer saying, well, the next hex is going to be a door with a level two trap. No, roll it and see what happens. Sometimes those um, random encounters aren't anything. You know, maybe you rolled and the encounter, two moose walked across the road in front of you. What are you going to do? You can just say, let them walk and keep on going. Not everything has to be complicated. Not every encounter has to be super challenging. But... It needs to be unique and from what you think fits your story platform. Okay. So that's my rant. Everybody, please take care. Be at peace.